happy to be here to talk about hydrogen with you today. And first of all, I give a brief introduction of my, myself. My name is Christina Hörder and I joined hydrogen as the acting CEO on 1st of September, so I'm pretty new in that role. But I've been in the history of the company for quite some time. I've been a board member for over five years, so I know pretty much about where the company is going. So I'm going to give an update on where we are. Hydrogen is a London, <laughs> an innovation derived here in Lund uh, many years ago, and it's been active and it is located here in Medicon Village. And we are developing uh, cell therapies uh, that where we are trying to, to uh, train the immune system uh, to not tolerate, to, to tolerate uh, things that they have forgotten uh, to tolerate. So we have developed a technology platform, uh, a patented technology platform, where we are actually trying to, to solve a lot of the medical problems that you have. The body sometimes reacts to um, in an unwanted way, and that is that it reacts to, it could be a biological drug that it actually starts producing neutralizing antibodies to, where it is really... Um, a, a, um, a situation where it should not try, uh, uh, it, it, which means that it doesn't give an effect. Then it could also be a transplant or organ where you um, uh, need to take lifelong immune suppression for the organ not to be rejected. And another situation could be an immune system. And what hydrogen has done is that we're making use of the body's own system where it is actually. Um, learning which when to react. The body is using dendritic cells, a type of white, uh, white blood cells that are actually telling the body where it should be uh, experiencing a thing like um, if it is a, f a friend or um, an enemy so that it should react. And we are actually doing an autologous cell therapy. So we take out cells from the patient and then we try with our patented technology to treat it outside to then go back and administer it back to the patient. And by doing that, we are telling the body that this is not something that you should react to. And this could be then done in, in several different uh, uh, uses that it could be used to. And uh, I have a very uh, highly experienced management team uh, with me. And I should mention Han Ying, who is here today, our CMO, that is very knowledgeable within hemophilia and um, uh, that is doing the first clinical study that we're doing. But we also have a lot of experience within managing through, through Dennis and Martina, for instance. So um, this is then our development program pipeline. And um, we have one program that just entered into clinical, the IDO8 program, where we are treating hemophilia patients. And I will go into that a lot more today. But two other examples is within IDOT and IDO8. And IDOT is something that we're trying to develop our technology, a cell therapy, to uh, help the body to accept a transplanted organ. And we have focused this on living donors in, uh, in kidney transplant. Uh, and then the third program is within the autoimmune diseases. There are several uh, different autoimmune diseases where we think that our platform could be able to use them. We have identified a couple of those that we think are especially good for us, that are um, um, one antigen and also uh, orphan drug potential. But uh, what has happened lately is that we just, in October, take a, took a strategic decision to really focus on the most advanced program where it is in the clinic. And uh, that is to, for cost effectiveness. Uh, and then we think that a proof of concept study that we are performing now within IDO8 would be able to, to help us to validate our entire technology platform. So that is a strategic decision. We have also looked at the market opportunity for IDO8, and we do think that it is larger than we originally thought. So we think that uh, it really replaces or has the potential to replace a very costly immunization scheme that these um, hemophilia patients are undergoing. I will get back to that. 
Uh, and as I mentioned, we have already progressed uh, the first development program into clinic. And we have uh, regulatory approval in both Sweden and Norway. And we also have the ethics committee in place. And the first patient was enrolled now, uh, last mid-October. With that, I will talk a little bit more about IDO8 and explain to you what it is. And the main problem in hemophilia A patients today is that quite a lot of patients that have severe hemophilia develop so-called inhibitors. That is a type of neutralizing antibodies against their factor VIII treatment, which makes the factor VIII treatment inefficient. <clears throat> And uh, the, in, the inhibitors today, the only way that you can treat it is by, by actually uh, doing some kind of immunization uh, process, which is quite similar to what you're trying to do with other types of allergies. And that is that you expose the patient to very large uh, or very high concentrations of the same thing that they are allergic to for a long period. And that is a very costly process. And that's the only way to reduce or eradicate the inhibitors. And the, the more recent uh, non-factor products that are coming within the hemophilia uh, field is not really uh, reducing the frequency of inhibitors or induced tolerance to factor VIII. So that is doing something else that is helping them with their bleeding. But according to the KULs that we have been in contact with, uh, the tolerance to factor VIII is very important to get back because they need it when they get a severe bleed or when you have a planned surgery or something. So, so it is a large medical need to try to, again, be receptive to your factor VIII treatment. So how do our technology then? We think about our autology cell therapy would reprogram the immune system to again tolerate factor VIII, and that is the whole process. So our thinking is to, to um, in replace it really to either an alternative to, to the immune tolerance induction or to completely replace it. So that is what we think. And this uh, ITI scheme is a very costly proce uh, procedure for the patients, also very cumbersome. They have to repeatedly for a long period, and this period could be between half a year and, and several years, three, four years. <clears throat> you give them very high doses of factor VIII, and for a 70 kilo adult, it is very costly. So it could be in Europe one and a half million euro for a, a complete period, two year period, while in the US it could be over two million US dollars. So we think that our technology with our cell therapy we would be able to prevent the development. Um, we would be able to, sorry. We also think that in the future that we would be able to develop uh, the development of inhibitors in total. But really, one course of our cell therapy could really repra replace this very costly and cumbersome treatment for the patient. So we are now in our clin first clinical study, and it's called Tolerate. It's a clinical <clears throat> phase 1-2A study with our cell therapy. And the key objective here is to demonstrate, first of all, the safety and tolerability of this drug. But as we are doing this in patient, because it's not possible to do this in healthy volunteers, we also have the potential to see uh, some clinical signs of efficacy in this study. And it's a single dose, dose escalation study, and, and the dose is really the number of cells that you are increasing with the different cohorts. And it's one IV administration for the patient. And it's really, in this study, it's the hemophilia patients that already have developed uh, ITI and have failed on, on the IT, sorry, developed inhibitors that have failed on ITI. So they are not, or that are not considered to be suitable for that. So that is a specific. And here we're having a, a manufacturing um, uh, of the compound in place. So we actually take the, um, the, the cells from the patient, and now the first patient has been included in, in, in Oslo, in Norway. So we take the cells, we send that to our manufacturing facility in Holland that we uh, proved last year that they had GMP in place for this, and then it's going to be uh, treated with our patented technology, 
uh, to make it tolerable again to factor eight, and then the material is sent back to the patient to, to give it back to it. So it's, it's very exciting for us to be able to prove this technology with this study. And how many patients then are we talking about that could be the potential target of this treatment? And it's a little bit more than 63,000 hemophilia A patients uh, in the major markets of the world. And if you take the average of those with mild, moderate and severe uh, hemophilia, around 20% of those patients are developing neutralizing uh, treatment to the factor eight. So roughly 12,500 patients. Uh, so that is the total number of patients. But if we then th think long-term prevention, then it could be all patients that could actually be potential for this treatment. But that is what we see. And um, what the, the news flow that we can expect from, from our study now uh, is really that we should have done the leukophoresis. That's when we take the cells out and then manufacturing the first cell therapy, and then treat the first cell therapy. And then also the safety and tolerability by an internal uh, monitoring board that looks at the safety and tolerability. So, so um, and as this is an open study, we will be able to communicate results as we go along at certain time points. What we also see in the future is that we have an interest in, in, uh, in other countries than, um, than the... Um, than Sweden and Norway, so we are, are right now planning to submit an uh, application also to a uh, European medi uh, medicinal agency. And then the data from the first cohort of the first three patients we expect to have that mi mid next year. And what we just announced is that we have a new uh, issue ongoing, and that is really to finance the continued uh, uh, development of the IDO8 program, and we're going to use a major majority of the proceeds for the, for the IDO8 program. And with that, uh, just a little bit comment about this is a slightly different setup than we have done before, and we're doing it without guarantors and warrants, and that is because we have listened much to our um, shareholders that would like to not be so much diluted, so we're doing it a bit different. And the timetable, uh, we're going to have a meeting in 13th December in the AGM to, to have that. So with that, question and answers. Thank you so much. <laughs> so do we have any questions? Thank you. Very exciting. New modality. Have you um, now with we've seen the first gene therapy coming out for hemophilia B? So how do you see this uh, in a world where we will also have gene therapy for hemophilia A? Very good question. I think that this will still have its place because I don't think that all patients will be eligible for gene therapy, but I definitely think there will be eventually a gene therapy also for hemophilia A. But I think there are already now a pool of patients that do have inhibitors, and there also will be patients that will not have that. So, so I think it's another tool in the toolbox alongside with gene therapies. So I'm wondering about the rights issue. Will the board and the management of the company uh, sign up for the... Yes, we have yes. already announced that there is a certain amount that will be signed up for the board and the management. Yes. Okay, and I'm also curious about the pricing of your products. Do you have a pricing plan already? For our cell therapies? Yeah. Um, no, but we know cell therapies are not very, it's not inexpensive. It's, uh, and uh, we have to carefully choose, I think, uh, situations where we think that you're able to price it so that you're able to actually finance the cost of it. And I think when you take IDO8 and when you look at those patients, that's a good example. If you look at those patients that the alternative would be this very costly ITI treatment that I think yeah, there is a good financial case to actually. You can see then what general cost or <clears throat> pricing for, for cell therapies on the market today. Maybe they are an average or, or on, I should say maybe the top is four to five million sex per treatment. But, but I, 
that you have to always put pricing in relationship to what you're actually doing. So I shouldn't forego and say what exactly a price should be. But I think you have to be aware of that you, you put yourself in a place where you have some margins. So do you want to explain a bit more um, um, for the, the recruitment for patients for IDO8? Mm -hmm. How is it going? Uh, we, we are having to, due to the regulatory authorities, we will have to recruit step by step. So one patient is recruited and that has to be treated and then it has to be safe and tolerable before it continues. So it's quite a slow progress. On the other hand, I think one of the advantages with, with this indication is that many patients are, are known. These patients, I should say, not many, these patients are known by the investigators. So we have pinpointed, we have the possibility to pinpoint patients, uh, the next patient. So, so we're trying to, it's a balance between uh, taking safety and tolerability is the pr primary and then speed is, of course, what we would like to do. But we have some limits there. Of course. Mm? Okay, so we have a question over there. Yeah. yeah. Nice presentation. Uh, just any thoughts on duration of tolerization? So will, the, will it be repeated treatments for the patient? It's a very good question. I think nobody really knows. There's a lot of companies today working with trying to tolerabilize and using different technologies. And I think one of the, the difficult thing will be that nobody really knows. It's like gene therapies. It has to be proven in battle somehow. But of course we hope and, and, um, that it will be uh, for a long period and it doesn't have to be repeated. Maybe like vaccinations, maybe uh, to some administrations first and then some top up. It, it will be very, very, up, it will be up to show <laughs> for each indication, I guess. Thank you so much yeah, for coming. Thank you.